let us uh, pray together. Our Father in heaven, anoint my lips now as, a, as I speak your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My sermon topic today is death and Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And this is based on the chapter 11 that you have just read, but I'm using New Living Translation. There are some examples or examples of some people in the Bible being raised from death. An example in Old Testament is a Shunammite woman, a Shunammite woman's her son, her son, and Elisha. And you can read more in Second Corinthians, Second Kings, chapter four. You know, I like this story because this word Shunammite actually caught my attention when I was reading. You know, all this while for the last many years of seven, eight years probably, you know, I'm using one herbal shampoo, you know, for my hair, because this is the only one that suits me. And the name, you know, at the side there, I just try to be funny maybe, huh? It's called Shulamite. That's why when the word Shulamite woman son, it, it attracts me, Shulamite. And what happened here is very simple. The son had a headache and he died. So this Shunammite woman invited or bring or brought Elisha to camp. And Elisha lay on top of the boy and the boy became alive again. Here is one example in Old Testament. Second example is on Paul and Atticus. This is more to be more exact, it is in the early church. That means after Jesus, Paul and Atticus, you can read in Acts chapter 20. And now it tells a story of, of Paul was preaching. You know, Paul probably very slow preaching. And it took him a long time in the evening. He preached and preached until probably midnight. And the boy was sitting maybe on the ledge, maybe very crowded, so they have to sit on the ledge. And the boy fell asleep, fell asleep. What happened when you fell asleep? Doop. Fell down at the five foot pathway. Fell down. And of course the boy died. And here you see Paul, a disciple of Jesus. He threw himself, the boy died. He threw himself on him and the boy became alive. Another incident, the dead were brought alive. Now we move to this main story, the story of Lazarus. And here, you will know, it's a very famous story. He was dead for four days, already in the tomb. But he was brought alive by none other than Jesus. Jesus here was very involved. And my sermon focus will be based mainly on this story of Lazarus will be three points. First point is about that death of Lazarus. Well, its implication or its significance. Second point is the timing of Lazarus. The timing of Lazarus and how Jesus' glory is displayed. The timing of Lazarus' death. And the top, third point is, yeah, our restorations matters, our resolutions uh, issues. Death of Lazarus and its implication. You see here what happened. You see three things happening here. First thing, this Lazarus miracle by Jesus, this was the last miracle performed by Jesus. And secondly, just before he died, probably one or two weeks, before his Jesus' own death and resurrection. You see how close it is? The third thing is about this uh, incident or this event is, it's, it's like something completely impossible to happen. Because the body already four days, 
We all know in a weather like this, second day body already started decaying. Third day, fourth day already smelly. But even here, we also know the body already buried in the tomb. And yet Jesus could take him alive. And also very unusual, or the way Jesus handled when he was told that Lazarus was very ill. You see here, in John chapter 11, verse 4, when Jesus heard about it, when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. So the Son of God will receive glory from this. You know, actually when uh, he was informed, his good friend, huh? good friend, called a good friend, Lazarus, was ill, was actually very ill. He also knew. But very interesting here is, he still stayed on for two more days. As he waited until he died. And actually he died. And actually Jesus also knew he died. Oh, only after that he said, now we go to Judea. He was still in Jerusalem. Bethany is about a few miles away, two or three miles away. The event took place in Bethany, where Mary, Lazarus, and the mother, they were all staying in that town. You know, it's, you see, the family, of course, would be very angry, isn't it? In a way, angry or disappointed. He already said something like this. In fact, not mentioned even. It's like, you ask Dr. Yao, my mother's sick. She know your mother very sick. And he only came duh, 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 two days later. And how is your mother? Already dead. Isn't it? Would you be disappointed? Of course, Mata would be disappointed. You know? So why Jesus, even at this point, in this type of event, oh, talking about Lazarus' sickness to the disciples? Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Already died. But. Secondly, he said, oh, he will receive. It happened for the glory of God. It happened for the glory of God. So the Son of God will receive glory. Why talk about glory in a death situation? Well, perhaps a few verses down the line, a um, few verses down the line, when, when, he, when Jesus came and met Martha, Martha outside meeting him, Jesus said this. Jesus told her, told Martha, because Martha at the time so disappointed with me. He said, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Verse 26, everyone who lives in me and believes in me, no, no one, uh, will, no one will, no, none will or never die, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Martha said, yes, Lord. I have always believed you. Here you see, anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Of course, that isn't, you know, happened to Lazarus. Lazarus woke up, isn't it? Jesus woke him up. And in the process, of course, Jesus received glory. Many people were there also at that time. But brothers, sisters, I come back to this. Because it is not entirely that this important verse by Jesus is only applied or applied to Lazarus. It is far more than that. I will come back to this important point. You see, apart from demonstrating, apart from demonstrating Jesus, huh, that he definitely had divine power. He also definitely, is, you know, he even... Uh, it is no problem to heal the sick. It's also no problem to raise the dead as he did to perfect example of Lazarus so that people will believe, so that the faith of his disciples will be increased. Not only that, Jesus not only just he himself do, he even empower, he empower his early disciples when they, are, when they were sent out 
in the early church, what? When they sent out, he, you know what he asked them? In Matthew? In Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, you see this. He told them, I, you all heal the sick, huh? He also said, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive up demons, freely you have received, you freely give. So the disciples can also raise the dead. And just now I give one perfect example of Paul. Paul also can raise the dead so that God will be glorified. So the Son of God will be glorified. So actually we, have to, we should have no doubt, 100%, no doubt at all. Such miracle were done and also to aim is to glorify Son of God. Glorify God. Therefore, Lazarus, Lazarus miracle. Simple. It just confirmed God's divine power and with that came glory to do it to Jesus, the Son of God. But forgive us, brothers and sisters, if we just think that I am the resurrection and the life only apply to Lazarus. Far from it, brothers and sisters. Here we can see or we can sense Jesus himself wanted to tell all of us, want to tell the disciples something even more important, something more glory or more glory or more truth about God. And this truth or about himself will affect all of us. What is this truth? This truth is like this. You know, it's, 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 um, it's, it's not just applied to Lazarus, but to all of us. And that actually leads to my second point. That timing of Lazarus is far more meaning when Jesus' glory is displayed. You see, uh, Lazarus' death and he's waking up. His death, I say he's waking up. Huh? I don't use the word resurrection. resurrection. Lazarus' death and his waking up preceded, as I mentioned already, preceded very closely Jesus' own death and his resurrection. In fact, within a few weeks probably, probably one or two weeks even, you know, after this instance, they retreat to a village and then they come again because Passover is there. It's their week. So very soon, next week, the following week, you will hear him. Oh, Jesus went to Jerusalem on a donkey. And then he went to Jerusalem. He was arrested. He, was, uh, he suffered, tortured, died on the cross, buried, and the third day, resurrection. So close even it. Timing of Lazarus. In fact, Lazarus' death and rest from dead here, we see, actually, we get a peek into Jesus' own death. Jesus was describing his own death, and he said about restoration, about his own death. That's where the death similarity stopped there. But a huge different implication when he proceeds to say his restoration. His restoration has hugely different implication. Because Jesus' death and restoration brings salvation to all of us, not to Lazarus, to all of us, for everyone who believes him. And this is very crucial. And this brings, of course, bring ultimate glory to our Lord. Because he brings us salvation and brings us eternal life. You see, what is for everyone who believes? What is his restoration or why is his restoration so important? That leads to my final point. The our restoration matters. First, very important to, uh, to, to very important. Jesus' restoration is so important to us. First, we must be assured there is restoration of Jesus. Just now we have read the respon responsive reading. And here I just if we emphasize it again, chapter 15, verse 14. 
He said, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. My preaching here is today no use. You listening also no use. This is so important, isn't it? Restoration is the key doctrine and the key of crucial belief. Jesus' restoration. Why? Be- because his second lead, because his restoration gives us eternal life. What did he say? Jesus told Martha and told us, I am the restoration in the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after that. When we believe Jesus, we will have eternal life. Our restoration is very different. Just from Lazarus, wake up. I will come back to it. So his restoration is very important to our our restoration. Our restoration matters or our restoration issues. Our restoration, as now you can see, is very different from what Oh, Lazarus waking up. Sometimes we have got that idea, oh, we also come, we may wake up something like that. No! Let us see what Lazarus wake up seeing. He's wake up seeing. So our restoration, very, very different. Lazarus wake up from dead. John 11, 43, 44. It's conducted by Jesus himself, right? He went to the cemetery, the tomb. Jesus shouted, Lazarus, four days already inside, come out. And the dead man dup, 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 came out. His hands and feet still bound you know, in the grave clothes. Face still wrapped in the head cloth. Jesus told the disciples, the people there, I'm wrap him and let him go. But you know that he wake up. You know, Lazarus died again. Lazarus will die again. The Bible not even mentioned it, but in, 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 in the following chapter 12, the priests, the people who plotted against trying to kill Jesus, he also put there. He will kill Lazarus. Probably this the last we heard about Lazarus. Want to kill him. Of course, in the end, Lazarus was killed. Meaning to say, Lazarus wake up. You see, so different. He will die again. It's a physical body wake up, right? He will die again. But brothers, sisters, what about us? What about the restoration Jesus telling us? Whoever believes in him will have eternal life because of his restoration and our restoration. In 1 Corinthians 15, actually the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians is all about it's, it's all about this restoration. I just highlight this view only. First Corinthians 15 to 44. Verse 42. When talking about how what happened to when we uh, were restored. It is the same way. This is Paul talking to Corinthians. Huh? It is the same way with the restoration of the dead. Our earthly body are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Unlike Lazarus, Lazarus will die again. Here, when we talk about our restoration and what Jesus is telling, I am the life, I am the restoration, and the life is talking about you will be raised to live forever. Number two, our bodies is buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. A bit of echo here, huh? Never mind. They are buried, and, but they will be raised in glory. Will be a glory. Will be raised in the glory, glorified body. No more brokenness. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised. Will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as they are natural bodies, they are spiritual bodies. Therefore, we, very different from Lazarus, our restoration matters. What are the issues? We must believe all these new features when we resurrect again. We will live forever. We will live forever. No more another death. No more Lazarus went through another death. We will be raised in glory. 
No more sins. No more sins anymore. No more brokenness. We are with Christ. Together, we are in glory also. And we are, will be very strong. No more physical illness. No more talking about illness. It's the illness that kills us. It's the illness majority resulted in death. No more of those things. And we are spiritual. We are spiritual new being. It's a completely different body that encompasses all this. That is what we mean by eternal life. That is what restoration, restoration of ours when we believe Jesus rise on the third day, when we believe Jesus restoration. And this thing can only happen because of Jesus. Because Jesus died for us. Because Jesus' restoration. Then we have eternal life. Jesus promised us. We have hope in this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in conclusion, we, from the understanding of Lazarus' death and he waking up, we now, we now, able to experience, able to encounter a living Jesus. We are able to encounter and experience Jesus' victory over the death and his restoration. And glory of our Lord is definitely displayed and we will enjoy it too. You see, in verse 4, just now that we read, as Jesus said, your sickness will not end in death. Your sickness will not end in death. Verse 4, remember? Tell Lord Lazarus, let us all believe what Jesus can do for every one of us because Jesus died for us. Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. He died for us. And even also important, because he resurrected. If he did not resurrect, again, our belief, our hope is in vain. Because of he resurrected, I am the, I am, I am, of the seven, one of this, I am. God saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Because of that, we have eternal life. We have eternal life. And that is our resurrection forever, live forever, eternal life. That's why it's so important as Paul spoken to Corinthians and he speaks to us today. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone believes in me will live even after we die. Brothers, sisters, as we huh, in this period of land, these are the things let us be close to Jesus and let us appreciate what he has done for us. He died, crucified, buried, and resurrection. And there we have that hope of resurrection and enjoy in that sense eternal life. And together in Jesus, together with Jesus, no more suffering, strong, and we must. Hence, brothers and sisters, and while we are still on earth, let us continue to work, as I can see, huh, living hope. Continue to work, continue to serve. There's so many people. Continue to serve. For what? To glorify our Lord. Amen.